So I would like to say good evening and welcome to the sixth annual Waco ISD Gifted and Talented Product Fair, also known as the Exploring Inspirations. This exhibition of student work is an excellent example of Waco's focus on advanced academics from elementary school through high school. Tonight's projects were created by Waco ISD's best and brightest students. Would you agree with me? Yeah. Only two projects from each grade level from each campus earned the right to advance to this event. You can imagine the intensity of competition as well as the difficulty of judging. There are many projects which remain at each campus that miss the cut but are still really great projects. This is the cream of the cream. These projects and tonight's displays are products of student creativity, imagination, and research. They are also the end result of outstanding teaching and faithful parenting. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting Waco ISD, but most of all, Thank you for supporting your student. As you know from your own student's experience and from looking at these projects, these kids needed your help, your support, your assistance, and they have it. And I thank you. So we'll be coming around talking to students and talking to you because we want to make this not just one of the best project fairs, but one of the best programs on Waco ISD TV. Thank you, and we will move on to the next portion of our program. Thank you. Next, we're going to talk to school board president, Pat Atkins, about what he's seen. President Atkins, what have you seen and what do you think of this project? You know, this is the sixth year we've done this and it's really impressive to see the effort and really the depth of research and really the creativity in some of the presentations made by the students and, it's, and just getting to visit with them individually and, and ask questions and they really, I mean, it, in terms of a gifted and talented program, uh, this type of learning is really impressive. So, so do you feel like Waco ISD has the kind of rigor that is necessary to meet the needs of gifted children? Yeah, I think the, uh, well, really under the leadership of our most recent superintendent, uh, <laughs> we, you know, by, by adding at the secondary level the Atlas Academy with the mini courses and giving kids an opportunity to delve deep mm -hmm. and then bringing in these sort of quasi pull-out programming that we do now where the kids get to do this type of in-depth research. I mean, you know, I've had three students they were all, uh, of my own that have come through the Waco schools. They were all identified as gifted and talented, despite the fact their father was on the school board. Well, I heard they took it from their mother. Yeah, That's they what they yeah. got. I've got the recessive genes. <laughs> but their needs were met. They were challenged. They've all succeeded. Uh, two of them you know, had great success in college yeah. and beyond. Our, our youngest is a senior this year. And so yeah, the rigor is there. The opportunity again to really do this level of research and, and then be able to present it and have to answer questions and, and think on your feet. I mean, it's something unique and it's something we do in Waco ISD. Well, I know you can ask tough questions. So were the kids able to answer your questions about their projects? They are. Uh, and I'm obviously not as hard as them as I am on administration. <laughs> but, but the truth is, you know, when you ask them about it, it's clear and one reason I do that is because it becomes clear this is not a project a parent did and put on the trifold board for the child. They're able to really uh, dialogue with you and explain things and point things out on the displays. And it's really very gratifying to know that our teachers, frankly, are, are inspiring these kids to do that level of work. Well, thank you, and thank you for being here, and I'll let you get back to your visit. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's time to interview Waco ISD's Director of Advanced Academics, Dr. Scott McClanahan. Hello. Dr. McClanahan, I know you have a big role in this and you've been planning it for months, so tell us a little bit about this. So this year we went to a different model of GT service and what we did was we actually have five elementary GT teachers that go from campus to campus and they pull the students out and work with them for a half a day a week. And over the course of the year, they have been putting together these various research projects, this being the culmination of that. And so I'm getting ready to walk around now and talk to some of the kids and find out what they did, what they found interesting, and what they found was a real challenge in doing this type of project. Well, I'm going to turn the mic over, and good luck, because let me tell you, there are some great projects. I don't know how you judged, or the committee judged, 
who got to get here. They're just all so good. Right. So they all started at a campus level fair, and then uh, they were judged per grade level, and then the grade levels pushed the students forward, and so we really are seeing the best of the best from the whole district here, and so it's really exciting. Okay. Okay, well, I'm turning the mic over to you, so you can walk with the kids. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so I'm here with Christian Delgado, who is a third grader at South Waco. Hi, Christian. How are you tonight? Uh, good. Great. And I see your project is about, does TV rot your brain? What did you find out? Yes, it does. How? Because, basically, if you want too much TV, it put in, like, it's using most of your energy, and the energy is actually the rotting, because when it's rotting, that means you're thinking too hard. Okay. What kind of research did you do to find out about this topic? Uh, lots of it. Where? On uh, Google and Health Kids. Health Kids, okay. And what was the most interesting thing that you found? That basically, if the TV, if you watch too much TV, it will basically shut down your whole system. Wow. Well, all right. Well, I guess you, your mom's going to keep you from watching TV, right? <laughs> well, thank you for being with us tonight, and congratulations on winning your campus fair. So I'm here with uh, Amelia Emerson, who is a fifth grader at South Waco, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her project. Amelia, can you tell us what kind of research you did to find out about leukemia? What I did was I researched, like, how people are, like, what what are we doing to help people and since and when we have pennies for pen patients at my school that's what got me thinking about researching for it so when I was researching I learned a lot about how to we can help support and that how was I, I was gonna help support was what we would do was have pennies for patient again but this time we would let uh, if they don't want to give money they can give um, food or um, food or toys or stuffed animals for them and then well, what I would do was get put them in a bag and go to the hospital and give it to them. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Okay, so tell me, I know when you started your research you had a bunch of different questions you wanted to answer. Was there any questions that you weren't able to find an answer for when you did your research? Yes. What was it? It was like, what, what are we doing to help? Because when I was researching, I tried to find out what people are trying to do to help, but I wasn't able to find that question, and that was kind of my main question I was trying to figure out. And in that, um, it was it was challenging, but a lot of my questions I answered, and I got through it. Sounds great. Well, congratulations on winning your campus fair and getting to be here tonight, and good luck with the judges. Okay, so I'm here with Shamar Reed, who is a second grader at South Waco. Shamar, I see that you did your project about squids. I'm really scared of those. Should I be? No, because they, because if there are too many fish and tiny animals, squid will eat them up. Because that's why squid are important. But they won't eat me? No. Well, some would, but sometimes they don't eat. So as you were doing your research, what, what did you come across? What kind of information did you come across that you were really surprised by? So I was surprised that a squid can actually propel itself forward really fast. It's really cool. What's really fast? Um, Do you know how fast? Uh, no. Well, I like your board. And your picture over here shows us what one looks like? Yes. And what are, the, what are the main parts that we need to be aware of? The siphon, which pulls it really fast, and the arms, which suckers, grabs prey, and the tentacle with hooks grabs prey as well. And the fins stabilize, and it helps it with swimming. Well, this looks like a spectacular project. Thank you. So congratulations on winning your campus fair, and good luck with the judges today. You're welcome. So Abigail Torres, who's a fourth grader at South Waco, decided to do her project on hunger. 
So, Abigail, what did you really want to know about, about hunger? That's a big topic. Mm, well, how many people die a year or a month and, like, days? So I see your driving question over here says, how would reducing American food waste impact the number of people starving? And so what did you find out? Well, I figured out that if you stop food waste, it can help hunger a little bit because you waste food that you could have given to other people. And what are, you, what are you referring to when you're talking about food waste? What kind of food do we waste? Well, there's a lot of food that you can waste. Like food, like less, leftovers that you don't want anymore. Some people throw them away. Okay, well, it looks like you've got a lot of really great facts here on your board. Was there anything that you wanted to know that you weren't able to figure out when you were doing your research? Well, I couldn't figure out how many people died of, hung, of food weight, like how many people died of hunger, but like I wanted to figure it out how many, how many people died of hunger, but they did food waste, and that's why they died, and I could not figure that out. Got it. Well, that gives you something to keep thinking about for next year's topic, right? Well, congratulations on winning your, your, your uh, campus fair, and good luck with the judges today. So I'm here with Shazaya Murphy, who is a fourth grader at West Avenue, and she did her project on how Jordans are a problem to the world. Now, are you talking about them specifically or all tennis shoes are bad? Specifically. What's wrong with Jordans? They're made out of non-renewable resources. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about that. Because um, they're made out of non-renewable resources and they could affect the world because they are making too many Jordans out of them. And what kind of non-renewable resources are we talking about? Some are rubber, canvas, leather, nunbuck, or synthetic man-made materials. Okay, and so did you come up with any solution? What can we do to make it better? I'm going to write a proposal to the company to make Jordans out of renewable resources because suing non-renewable resources could affect the environment. Well, that is absolutely spectacular. And if you need some help writing that letter, you can email me. All right? Congratulations on winning your campus fair and being here tonight, and good luck with the judges. Thank you. All right, so I'm here with Alex Rodriguez, who's a second grader at Kendrick Elementary. Alex, it looks like you did a really interesting project on tsunamis. Can you tell us about it? It, it took me six days to make. Uh, I had to, I had to, like, I had to know which, what to, what to make, how to, what to put on the edges and to match it with what my project is about. So I see you put it, uh, put together a video that went along with your project. What's your video about? Tsunamis. What about them? Uh, it, it shows pictures and it details about it flooding towns and destroying homes. Okay, so as you were doing your research, was there anything that you wanted to find out that you didn't find when you were researching? If one of them can hit Texas. Ah, that's a good question. I bet we all want to know that. Well, congratulations on winning your campus fair and good luck with the judges tonight. Thank you. Okay, so I'm here with Alexis Sokum and Caden Squajardo, who are fifth graders at Mountain View, and they did a really interesting project on cochlear implants and deafness. So I'll start with you, Cadence. Can you tell me what was your favorite thing about getting to research this? Um, my favorite thing was, of course, the research and like getting to know more about cochlear implants. And what did you find out that you thought was really interesting? That it, whenever you put the um, cochlear implant in, you have to wait like six, six months before they turn it on. Really? Oh, I didn't know that at all. Okay, and. Um, Alexis, can you tell us about what you what you put together here that's on the computer and what other kinds of things you brought with you? Uh, we created a Powtoon as our presentation and our action piece was a flyer uh, that has the link to a donation in place to, to raise money for cochlear implants and people to make them more affordable. And we also have pins with a really cute quote about deafness. 
So how many people could actually benefit from cochlear implants? Did you guys find that in your research? Um, anyone that wants it and is completely deaf. Wow, okay. Well, great. Well, you guys, congratulations on winning your campus fair and getting to be here, and good luck with the judges tonight. Okay, so I'm here with Zariah Garcia, who's a fifth grader at Kendrick Elementary, and she's done a really interesting project on standard of beauty. Can you tell us about what you researched? Well, I researched about women that try to make themselves fit in, try to make themselves look perfect for people to accept them. And what did you find as you were doing your research? Is that a prevalent problem? Um, it it kind of is a problem because I know a lot on social media, there's like a lot of like makeup tutorials on how to do t different types of makeup and people try to fit in and it's not working. And I kind of wanted to research like why they do that and I mean. So I think one of your driving questions had to do with shifting the way people think about beauty. And so what do you think one is one way that we can do that? Um, well, I know a lot of people already try and tell people to be themselves, but I think that you should, like, um, I forgot. I, you should actually do it yourself. Like, the people, I, I think that the people that tell others to be themselves don't be themselves. So they should show it too. So you're telling me that they should model the behavior that they're trying to get other people to follow. Okay, good. Well, it looks really interesting and uh, congratulations on winning your campus fair and getting to be here tonight and good luck with the judges. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'm here with Micaiah Washington and Carson Harris. Micaiah is a first grader and Carson is a second grader at Mountain View Elementary and they did a really interesting project on rhinos. So. Micaiah, tell me, what was one of the most interesting things that you found out about rhinos? Um, rhinos' horns are made of, of the same thing as our fingernails in here. Wow, okay. So I'm not going to see ladies like gluing those on as fake, like, no? Okay, good. And Carson, can you tell me, what was one thing that you were really interested in finding out about rhinos when you started your research? Um, that uh, the, older, the older rhino uh, runs away the young, the baby rhino because it wants to get all the, um, because, I don't know, but it's very interesting. Like the, okay. like the older rhino um, chases after the um, baby calf. Okay. And what kind of research did you guys do? Where did you look for your information? Uh, Pebble Go, Kid Rex, I think a little bit of safari. Did he get them all for you? Yes. Yeah, you got them all? Okay. Well, I see you put together a board, and then you have a little diorama here. And what is that supposed to show us? Um, what, a rhino, some rhinos in the forest, and this is our sun, and this is the grass. Great. And uh, Carson, what are you holding? Um, this is the habitat of a rhino. Well, great. Well, it looks like you guys did a lot of work. Congratulations on winning your campus fair and good luck with the judges tonight. All right, so I'm here with uh, Evie Henderson and Ava Johnson, and they are second graders at Mountain View Elementary, and they did their project on giraffes. And what got you interested in giraffes, Evie? Um, I didn't know much about them. I only really knew that they were really tall. Okay. So now that you've done some research, Ava, what did you find out about them other than that they're just really tall? They are 14 to 15 feet tall and um, they have their babies standing up so they fall about six feet. Wow. Well, I'm glad neither one of you fell six feet when you were born. Okay, and what kind of stuff did you choose to put on your board or put, on, put in your diorama? We did some pictures and in our diorama, we made some little bit of water because they um, are in the savanna and there's not a lot of water. And then we did this to, so you can visualize the related animals. Evie, was there anything that you wanted to find out about them that you didn't find out as you were doing your research? Well, 
Well, maybe like why they're um why they're spark um why do they have the the different spots that they have? Hey, that's a good question. I wondered that too. Well, girls, congratulations. It looks like you did a really great project. Congratulations on winning your, your campus fair and good luck with the judges tonight. All right, so I'm here tonight with uh, Libby Sanders, who is a fourth grader at Lake Air Montessori, and she did her project on narcolepsy. And Libby, can you tell me why you chose that as a topic? I chose it because this year I was diagnosed with narcolepsy and I wanted to find out more about it. Okay, and what, when you were doing your research, what did you find out? I found out that narcolepsy does not have a cure and that it is caused by lack of hypocretin, which is a chemical in your brain that helps you stay awake during the day. I think I might be suffering from part of this too, seriously. What kind of things did you choose to put on your board for us so that we could all learn more about it? I chose a little bit about the problems of narcolepsy and what it, what it looks like when you're asleep. And it says cataplexy because, well, cataplexy is part of narcolepsy and it's a big part of it. It's where you lose your muscle control. And the solutions, which there aren't very many because, well, there isn't a cure to it at all. And of course, my favorite, the narcolepsy warriors. The famous people that have accomplished tons of stuff with this. My favorite, the two sports players, because I play soccer. Well, that's fantastic. Well, this is really interesting. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And uh, good luck with the judges. And uh, I hope that, uh, that you really show out and uh, make a stand for all those people who have narcolepsy. Thank you. All right, so I'm here with Jocelyn Ibarra, who is a third grader at Brook Avenue Elementary. And Jocelyn, you did your project on hurricanes. And tell me why. What made you choose that topic? I wanted to help people that, that live with hurricanes or to, to find a better home. And what did you find out? That they have to make their homes out of cinder block. Okay, can you explain that? I see you got like a little sample house right here behind you. So, why cinder block? Because it's very strong. Okay, what kind of research did you do to find out the answers to your questions? Um, where did you look for your research? Google. And where did Google lead you? To what kind of sources? That's a tank. Did you look at like weather sites or did you look at history sites? Okay, and what was the most interesting thing that you found when you were doing your research? Um, that, that this part is the strongest part of a hurricane. Ah, the eye, the eye is the strongest part? Yes. Why is that, do you know? No. Okay, well that gives you something to research for next year, right? Yes. Okay. Well, congratulations on winning your campus fair and good luck with the judges. All right, so I'm here with Keyshawn Holly, who is a fifth grader at Brook Avenue Elementary. And Keyshawn, I see you did your, your research on medical robots. What were you interested in finding out? I was interested in finding out how medical robots work. And what did you find out? I found out medical robots aren't programmed. They are actually handheld robots that go on their own. Can you give us an example? What kind of things can they do? Well, an example is the Flex Robotics, this one right here actually is like a snake robot that goes right down your throat that helps cut out your tonsils just in case. Wow. Um, so if I go to my doctor, will he have this? Well, not yet, because this is actually not in America yet. Okay. Soon? Soon. Okay. So what was the most interesting thing you found out while you were doing your research? The most interesting thing I found out about these robots is most of them actually have emotions. Wow. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Um, well, thanks for being here tonight, and congratulations on winning your campus fair, and good luck with the judges. Thank you. 
Okay, so checking in with some fifth graders from Crestview Elementary. I have a group here, and our group members are? Luis Lopez. Richard Ramos. Andrew Juarez. And I see that you did your research on child abduction. What got you interested in doing that? I just uh, wanted to see how we could prevent it and what are the, what are the effects and what are, what are different types of child abduction. And did you find a lot about different types of abduction and is that something I need to worry about? Um, yeah, it's actually a really big problem in a, lot of, in, in a lot of states, including over here in Texas. There's also some child abduction in other places, like in other countries like Russia and, and Iraq. There's like a lot and well, that's all I have to say. And what do you think is the biggest thing that we can do to help this problem? I mean, the biggest thing we can do right now is to just, I mean, is to just listen to the Amber Alerts and like try to help find the kids that have been abducted, you know. And how do you think we should do that? How do we find the kids that have been abducted? Well, we should, uh, you should actually try to cl keep a clear uh, photo of your child so you can know how, how the guy looks. So if anyone sees him, it's like, oh, hey, that's, uh, that's the child that's mi that came missing and report that. So it's a good idea for all of the viewers on Channel 17 to take a recent picture of their children to keep it with them in case anything should happen. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, this is a really important project, and did you guys enjoy doing your research? Yes. All right. Well, congratulations on winning your campus fair and being here tonight, and good luck with the judges. Okay, so we're here with Rory Stoney Kinnis, who is a first grader at Hillcrest. And Rory, what made you decide to do your project on movie directing? Um, because I want to be a movie director when I grow up, and I didn't know how to direct a movie, so I couldn't be a movie director. So what did you find out? Do you know how to direct one now? Yes, I, I, I know that now that um, in each step, there's something different to help create the movie and, um, and how to develop the movie to make it as one big movie to send to the theaters and everyone around the world can see it. And I, you gave me this, uh, this handout that you made about the 12 steps of movie making and it looks like a lot of these things don't have anything to do with actually making the movie. Is that, is that right? Um, well, the names of them might not sound like they would be part of a movie, but they actually are because the idea is when you come up with all the stuff that's going to happen in the movie, and the um, development finance is helping making the movie, and um, and the script development is just making all the, um, um, the scripts and stuff like that, and packaging is getting ready for the financing. Financing is the money, and um, is the money, and the producer has to figure out a way to pay all the money for the movie. And in pre-production, it's the planning for the suit of um, everything that you have to do, like the props, the people that you're gonna hire, and everything like that. And then the suit is when you're um, is when you're directing the whole thing. And post-production is the editing of what you just did. Sales is um, once you're getting ready for the sale so you can sell everything out to the world. And marketing is uh, making a screen that to show the movie on so the audience will react to it. And um, the 11th step is um, expedition and um, you're getting ready to send it to the theaters like marketing and distribution. And, um, other windows is when you sell it to hotels and airplane companies and it, the internet and so it sell it out to public media. So it sounds like you're ready to make your first movie right now. Is that right? Yes, I've actually started my movie so far because um, I started directing, uh, well I did start directing, I started writing the, um, the it down in notebook and stuff like that. Well, this is absolutely fantastic and I'll be watching for your first movie to come out. So congratulations on winning your campus fair and good luck with the judges. Thank you. All right, so I'm here with Katie Shackelford, who's a fifth grader at Parkdale Elementary, and she did her project on smoking. So what were you really interested in finding out about? Well, I didn't know all about smoking and I didn't know what it all did. I thought it was just some drug that hurts you, but I found out it was a lot worse. Like what? what? How's it worse? 
Well, there's nicotine, which is addictive, and if you don't like throw it away and get rid of it, you will start wanting to get it more and more and more. Okay. You've got a lot of really interesting looking pieces with your with your project. So what do you think is the solution? What do we really need to do to help people to stop smoking? We need to stop creating cigarettes. And how who can do that? Anybody. So how can I how can I stop them from making cigarettes? Go to a store and say, hey, I don't want to buy this. Get rid of this now. Okay, and what is this? Uh, I see you got, is that a lung? Yes, this is a smoking lung and a non-smoking lung. Wow. Okay, what, was there anything that when you were doing your research you wanted to know but you weren't able to find out? Not really. I found out a lot more than I thought I would. Well, this is really quite a project, so congratulations on winning your campus fair, and good luck with the judges. Thank you. All right, so I'm here with Bella Gaines, who's a third grader at Parkdale, and she did one that I thought was really interesting on natural resources. Bella, what did you want to know about natural resources? I wanted to know, I wanted to know how we could conserve them, because I know they are running out very quickly, and we might not be able to get a lot of them back. And when we talk about natural resources, what kind of things are we talking about? Talking about stuff like wood, paper, um, gas, oil, and stuff like that. Okay, and so as you were doing your research, what's one of the big things that you found out that, that we could do to preserve our natural resources? We could try to make less factories because factory farming is a big part of what makes deforestation, air pollution, and water pollution. Okay. Wow, this is a really important topic for all of us. And I see your di diorama here looks really bleak. So the trees are really pretty in one part and they're gone in the other one. Is that just showing us what's going to happen if we don't preserve our resources? Yes, because this, because Is deforestation a problem? Yes, very much so, because it's not really easy to regrow trees because they take a long time to grow, especially stuff like oak. Got it. Well, thank you for sharing your information with everybody, and congratulations on winning your campus fair, and good luck with the judges. All right, so I'm here with a first and second grade duo from Dean Highland, who are a brother and sister. I have Laquan and Zanaria Hughes, and they did their project on women and football. And I think, Zanaria, you must have been the brainchild behind this, right? Yes. Why did you want to, why, did you, why were you interested in women and football? Because I, I was the first girl to play um, black football for Southern Panthers. And I got picked over boys and got, and got picked on the All-Star team at Dallas Cowboys Stadium, and I, I um, I want to see if there was any more girls that played football. And so you decided to help her out, Laquan? Yes, sir. And what did you find out? That women do have their own league. Wow. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Is there a team around here? Yes. There's also the Dallas Elite, Greenstone Power, and Austin Outlaws. You know. Wow. Okay. And so where did you guys, where did you guys look to find your research? on an app. Oh, you went to an app and used an app. Okay. And um, what was the most interesting thing, thing that you found out, Zanaria? That there were uh -huh, 600, uh, I forgot. Uh, you forgot your facts? Naquan, what was the most interesting thing you found? That women had their own league. That was, that's the most interesting thing? Was there anything you wanted to know that you didn't find when you were doing your research? No. No, you got it all? Okay, so are we gonna be seeing you in one of these leagues in the future? Uh, probably. Probably, okay, great. Well, you guys, this really looks fantastic. Congratulations on winning your campus fair and good luck with the judges. Okay, so I'm here with Ariana Guerra, who is a fifth grader at Bells Hill. And Ariana, I gotta tell you, 
Um, this definitely caught my eye because I'm a big fan of candy. Any of my employees will tell you that. So can candy harm us? Yes, if you eat too much. Okay, and what exactly is considered too much? Well, according to the American Heart Association, a man is supposed to have a hit 150 calories per day, 37.5 grams or 9 teaspoons, and a woman is supposed to have 100 calories per day, 25 grams or 6 teaspoons. Okay, so if I eat little miniature Kit Kats all day long, I should be okay? It depends, and it, it depends on how many grams, and you have to pay attention to the sugars and calories and all that. Okay, how exactly can it harm me? Well, it could cause obesity, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. Wow, okay, that's, that's definitely something to think about. So where did you consult when you were doing your research? Well, I thought to myself, I was like, I'm an obese child and I want people to be aware of how there's a struggle that way and I want to bring it to other people's attention that you can prevent that in many different ways. And so what kind of sources did you use to find information? I used, I used internet articles, I used books, and I did interviews and YouTube videos and magazine articles. Wow, that's pretty thorough. All right, and what was the most shocking thing that you discovered? That a simple, simple vitamin C is the best help to cure that. Wow, okay. Well, I will tell you I'll be upping my vitamin C, and congratulations on winning your campus fair, and good luck with the judges. Thank you. All right, so I'm here with Kevin Gutierrez, who is a fourth grader at Providence Heights, and he did his project on the overuse of fossil fuels. And Kevin, tell us why this was a concern to you. One day I was just learning class about renewable resources, so then I started to wonder what would happen if the world didn't have fossil, uh, fossil fuels. It would change, it would impact a lot. So I decided to do this to, so people would stop using fossil fuels because I, I don't want the world to run out of fossil fuels and like start releasing gases and stuff like that into the other planets or stuff like that. Because there could be planets, I mean, planets with life. There could have planets with life and then it could just ruin it. There would be no life in the solar system. So what is something that we can do to stop the overuse of fossil fuels? You could just check your, if you're, your client, your person that gives you energy, you can check if they use over fossil fuels. And if they do, just try to look for one that doesn't. Or send a letter to them saying that, hey, we should stop using less fossil fuels and more renewable energies. So if I'm using a hybrid car, am I doing a good job? No. So I've got a car that uses both gas and electric. Is that better? A little better, yeah. Okay. I could do better though, huh? Yes. All right. Well, this is a really important topic for everybody to, everybody to think about. So um, was there something that was really shocking that you found? That, that President Trump wants to bring back coal mining jobs. And what's shocking about that? that I didn't know that because there was like Congress that didn't let it pass because uh, Barack Obama sent a law out before. And so I thought like, why, what, why did this happen and stuff like that. Is there anything bad about coal mines? I would say yes, because a lot of people, when they spend too much time in there, they, um, they start breathing the bad oxygen and it releases. All right. Well, congratulations on winning your campus fair and good luck with the judges tonight. Okay, so I'm with Jarvis Wilson, who's a fourth grader at J. Chines Elementary, and he did a project on probably his favorite thing, video games. Am I right? Yes. And what did you find out? That video games has a whole bunch of positive and negative effects on the human body. There's positive effects? Some. Like what? Um, or educational. Can you tell us some more about that? Like. Well, how, what can we learn from video games? Maybe about numbers and how mixed operations. 
Well, more importantly, what are the detriments of video games? What are the bad things that can happen to us? Um, nearsightedness, the headaches. Okay, those are bad. Those are both bad things, right? Where did you look for your information? What kind of sources did you use? Um, Newspapers, magazines. Yes. Internet sites. Yes. Yes. And what was the most important thing that you think you found? Um, about the impact on the, I mean, the health effects. The health effects? And what are, what are the health effects? Are you just talking about the eyesight or other health effects? How it could affect the nerves, the muscular, and the skeletal. System? Yeah. Wow. Well, this sounds like something all parents should know about. So thank you for bringing this project and, you know, showing your information to everybody. And congratulations on winning your campus fair and good luck with the judges. Thank you. So as we get ready for the judging, uh, we've been able to glance through and see a number of the different projects that our students have come up with. We see that Waco ISD students really do care about different issues and they're really passionate about finding current information to share with other people. And so um, we're going to move on to the judging and uh, see what our judges have thought about all of the different presentations. Thank you again for coming to Waco ISD's uh, Advanced Products and Performances Fair. Our students have worked very hard this year and we are so very proud of each and every one of them. All of our judges were very, very impressed. So give yourselves a pat on the back. Y'all did a fantastic job. All right, we are gonna start with first grade. So if you're a first grader, listen up. In third place, in first grade, if I don't say your last name correctly, I apologize. Jada Sigget. Good job, Jada. actually have a tie for first place in first grade. Our tie is between Rory Stoney Kennis and Gavin Mabry. Is Gavin here? That's Rory. That's Rory. We're missing Gavin. Is Gavin here? Okay, if you're the campus representative for Gavin, Perfect. Let's give first grade a round of applause. All right, second grade, we have a tie for third place. Brooks Bronstein and Hadley Moore. Second place, Mary Marari. Mar 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 I'm start sorry, Marari. Marari Linares. <laughs> and first place goes to a team duo of Ava Johnson and Evie Henderson. Kristen, Christian Delgado. Second place goes to Diego Guevara. First 
place goes to August Zimmerman. a tie for second place, A.J. Kirks and Kevin Gutierrez. And first place for fourth grade goes to Sarah Becker. And final, our fifth graders. Did y'all have an opportunity some of to see some of the Atlas um, projects? No. no? We had some Atlas students. Are we short of metal? A third. Yeah. Two red. No, or two white. Two white. Okay, run and grab it and I'll I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Two white. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to start. We have a team of two for our third place, Blake and Aiden. Okay, Miss it's Alden. Alden. I'm sorry, Blake and Alden. I'm sorry, guys. Um, Miss Kibitza is going to grab one more medal. Okay, so hang tight right there. Thank you. Second place, Sam Everett. You're welcome. And first place, Valerie Garcia Perez. There you go, Valerie. Congratulations. Nice job. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, that wraps up our awards tonight. Thank you all so very much. Your students did a fantastic job. We appreciate you all coming out tonight. Have a great evening. Please make sure you take your students' projects with you. Please take your students' projects with you.